are um, on to some things that uh, we started with talking about the fear of the Lord. And the fear of the Lord, the hovering and the brooding of the Spirit, the hand of the Lord moving. Um, there were different things like this that the Lord has uh, told us to pray. And it was an assignment to Word of Life to pray over this region, to pray over our families this many years ago already. And um, the Lord had instructed me to go back and make sure we're still doing what he told us to do. Because uh, sometimes we'll get excited about something and do it for a little while. And, and he never said that assignment ended. So... Um, and so now, especially, we need to, you know, be praying these things just and knowing how to move in these things um, because of the times that we're in. I mean, thank God for all the prayers that were already prayed because it's helping us out right now. So the prayers we're going to pray and agree, even, even if we agree at the end of a prayer service, just short, but we're in a prayer of agreement. It's really not how long you pray many times. <laughs> Um, longer prayer services are many times when you're in, like, I need a revelation from God, and you just hang with him, and then you hear with him. But when you know what you're supposed to do, say it. Yeah. Declare it. Receive it. Petition it. And then that's the end of that. And um, I just love the fact that when we can come into unity and we have the prayer of agreement here, um, just with the people here, we could take over a city. <laughs> just you know make a difference in a city and and that so um i looked up the word this this assignment was hovering and brooding of the spirit and when this was given um it makes you think about these two words well what does it actually mean to ask god to hover over something or to brood over it um and of course you know you'll you'll see that they refer to like the mother hen broods over her little chicks Right, they're tucked in under, and she's like all fluffed out. Um, I had to, I had to catch. We have a fence where there was a little hole, and I had to catch some of my little chicks because they were going to get in to where my dogs were at. And it was like this moment, like only I can save you now, you know, kind of moment. And and I'm <laughs> coming in there thinking, you know, somebody's going to appreciate this, right? That mother hen was so all over me, like white on rice. I was like, <laughs> so I ended up taking a five gallon pail and just like put it over top of her. But you could still hear all the, the you know, and then I'm like grabbing the baby chicks and doing, and it just was, you come out of there sweating and you're like, okay, that worked out. But she stayed fluffed out, like pff, their feathers all come out and they may war like when that happens. So there's something to that hovering and that brooding you know, for them to, to be able to do that actually creates life, right? That's how eggs are hatched. They don't hover and brood, they don't hatch. And so they stay in that brooding mode until those chicks are up on their own. And when God wants to create something new, he does that through his word and he does that through the power of the hover and the brooding. And it's his, and he's very protective of what is his. Just like the mother hen. <laughs> you know, don't mess with what is his. That's why when, you know, um, and I think this applies more to things that might not just be just preachers kind of thing. And a lot of times we'll take that verse where it says, don't, you know, attack God's anointed. It doesn't say it like that, but that was my translation. Um, so, but anyways, it, um, because, you know, it'll come back on you. Well, that's because when you're messing around with what God ordained or what, what he has anointed or what he instituted or any of those things, um, he's already in that hover and brooding moment. That's actually, you don't want to mess with that. Even if you can look at it and go, well, that ain't perfect yet. doesn't matter. He's hovering and brooding over it. Best you just quiet. <laughs> And let him do what he's going to do. See how it all works out in the end. So um, when I looked up the word hovering, it literally just means to be over top of. Um, but it can have that feeling of you're watchful in a way. You're not just stuck over top of something. You're watching it. You're hovering. There's it, Because when you put ING on the end of it, that means there's a movement at the same time you're in a still position. I'm over top of this, but I'm hovering over top of it. it. means I am overseeing it. I am watchful of it. Um, and I wanted to, when I looked it up, uh, when you look things up in the Greek and the Hebrew and your concordance, uh, hover takes on a little bit different light than it does. If you look it up in the dictionary, uh, one of the meanings means to remain in one place in the air. You know, um, but the scriptural 
uh, I guess, picture idea to it is that like I'm hovering over this body right now. I'm an overseer. So I don't come in and just focus on what I'm going to do and whatever. I mean, my, my mind is trained that way to watch over. That way you might be talking to me and I can see, you know, something's going on with a little kid over here because my, my mind is trained. It's over the whole thing. Now I can't control it all. I can't do all that. But there, there's an idea of like hovering, like we're going to keep this safe. Yeah. Um, and when you're creating something, you're hovering over it. You're building something or whatever. That's all coming out of the imagery area of, of your brain and your heart that God has lit on fire with an idea. And you hover over that thing to build it. Hover over your car when you're building it out. You hover. It's, it's you're doing it. And you're overseeing it. And you're seeing the different aspects. So when we pray for God to hover over something, it, he sees it all already. But we're ask, asking him to be real specific to like, let your presence settle on this and oversee it in such a way um, you put it in order and then speak to us how we can be a part of that hover. That's how you take a city. That's how you uh, affect a region. And he had given us the assignment about affecting the region in that way. So this was uh, the sheet of something that my husband put together a long time ago already. Um, and then brood, the word brood, is exactly how I describe it. They give a word picture of, you know, uh, like he brooded over his need to, to find a wife. He, he, there's like a consuming feeling that comes out of brooding. It's not just protection. It's like, oh, this has to happen. This has to happen. And I have to protect or I have to do these different things. So, um, um, so when we're asking Holy Spirit to hover and brood over uh, a situation, wow, that's a big prayer. Come and oversee this thing and, um, and bring life to it. Just like the mother hen sitting on the eggs. I mean, she don't sit the way she's supposed to sit and hover. They don't hatch. And, um, and, and so there, there's something, and she doesn't brood. It didn't matter that they hatched. There's no protection for those, those little chickens. And so it's the same with us. We're asking him to do something he is already part of his character. It's not like he's inventing something new. You know, like, wow, we asked him to do this unique thing. Nah, he's doing that with us right now. But we're, we're saying let's get a specific to the petition we're bringing before the throne of God right now. Regarding my son. Regarding that the doctor's report. Regard come and hover and brood over that now we're getting a specific right and then i believe he sends angels and different uh workers to be able to just move in on it and sometimes you know we pray that the workers the lord of the harvest would send harvesters right and we think you know just for the loss so that we you know we they can get saved well salvation is is perpetuous and it's about all things and so when i pray that um he would hover and brood, it attracts Christians and they don't know that they're being attracted to a certain thing. But suddenly they're involved with that thing. They're, they're over here following God and they're like, I don't know, I just feel led to go over here. That comes out of the hover and the brood because something's happening specific to that situation and it begins to, the magnetism of God begins to pull the right people at the right time in the right place, just happen to be at the hospital just happen to be at the government building, just happen to know a certain thing or know a certain person. And all of a sudden you're just like, oh, whoo, I just got goosebumps. Um, there's, there's just something to that, that right now we need that as a weapon more than ever. Um, he's doing it in general. He's called us in general. His spirit's moving. The grace of God is being poured out daily for those who are humble enough to receive it. We got all these things going on. But when you pray a specific to that, it's like you pray over your school. Oh, my. There's all kinds of connections, though, you may never know of just because the heat of God has now started on that egg. Right? And he just sits on it. Because he's bringing something to life. Right? And then he's the one who starts it and he'll finish it, but he's also the protector of it. 
That's why it's good when he does something, right? So, um, so in a nutshell, it says the hovering and brooding of the Holy Spirit is to prepare us, influence and work with us and impart into us so that our life aligns with his kingdom. So let's say you have a son or a daughter who went rogue, right? The word of God's in them. You know, most of the time when you're here, Christians, you're like, I taught them better than this. Or they were way too smart to be that dumb. <sighs> you know, it's, it's like, what's going on? It's kind of like a shocker kind of thing. The hovering and the brooding of the spirit um, is, is that impartation that's in. When you pray that, it lights up what's already been imparted. So think about if we do that with our kids, the word that's in them that has its own inherent power, the Bible says, that goes in and divides wrong from right. Now they're going to be in a wrestling match inside of themselves just because of the hovering and the brooding in the spirit. Right? You're just praying, God, come sit on this. Light up the word that's already in them, even if they disdained it, even if they didn't understand it, it went in. And now light up the power of Christ in them just by that hovering and bruise. It's so exciting. But think about if you do that on, the, on the, the basis of revival for your family or revival in the region. All the prophetic words that are out there that are just sitting and hovering, right? that now get lit up. All the prayers of little grandma who was praying for the region or some church down the road or whatever, now gets lit up. The prayers of the people who founded our nation are still hanging and hovering and brooding. So we're tapping into what's already been set up. There is a power that the church needs to come into with us. That's like, wow. I did not. And when this was written and, and when we knew about it, we did the best to pray those prayers or whatever. But the revelation, I don't even know how many years ago this is already. We're coming up on, I think, 19 years of being here. This is a long time back. The understanding of this hovering and brooding is far greater now than it was before. It's like, oh. Because we just were faithful to what he said. All right, we're going to pray that. But we didn't see really what was happening. We didn't see the prepare us work in us and impart to us so that we align with the kingdom the sphere of his rule his domain we're coming into alignment with that nothing can stop his kingdom we're out of alignment with it it still exists but it doesn't mean we're going to see the power of god happen and the church has been powerless overall Otherwise, there'd be tons and tons of healings. There'd be demonic, there'd be manifestations on a continual basis because there's so much demonic junk going on. I mean, there'd be that kind of stuff happening in the negative, but also in the positive um, where it would just be popping off. Now, we see some pretty good things, but we haven't seen nothing compared to what he wants us get in that hovering and the brooding. Now, intercessory prayer will, a prayer of agreement is one thing, but you move into intercessory prayer uh, intercessors know how to have hang time. They're going to sit on some eggs, right? They're going to go without water. They're going to do all the things chickens do. Cause I'm always like, you know, do I need to like give you something? And even when I put stuff there and they're sitting on their eggs, all they do is ruffle out and look at you. They're not getting off that nest till they decide, you know, um, it's that type of feeling that goes with it. And so when we're praying this and we're in that intercessory prayer, we've entered a zone where it's like until something hatches out. And even then I'm responsible as a prayer person to watch over that. I'm imitating my father. I'm going to feed it. Let it walk around. Their I'm imitating as they're this thing is tucked underneath the wings that he's given me as I'm tucked underneath the Father. There is such great power available to change this nation. Right here, the kingdom of God is at hand. And then when you put it in us, and it connects with the kingdom of heaven, and he imparts things from heaven down to the kingdom of God in us, whoo! There's the power. So um, our prayers, sometimes we're working real hard and we don't realize how much we're maybe in the, in the flesh part. We're getting tired of these prayers of agreement and stuff. Come on, I want to see change. Come on, come on, come on. But there's something God also wants to train into us is how to submit and let him, it's almost like let him hatch us out in this new thing. 
you know, or let him let us be or understand we can tight underneath his wing. We can be tight under it and know how to just be there. That's powerful because he's hovering and he's brooding over us. We're not little victims hiding under the wing. We're like, where my father goes, I go with him. And it's amazing how many little chicks that hen can fit underneath where you don't even know they're there. You're like, why are you getting all so, I, and I've done that where I've walked in and I'm like, what are you so upset? I hadn't seen the chicken for a while or whatever. Well, because they're sitting on 10 chicks and they don't want you to see them. So they're all, flo- and all of a sudden you're like, what's going on? You kind of try to move them and stuff starts peeping and you're like, oh, <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Um, so there's something, there's something about that. So for him, the Holy Spirit to prepare in us, um, that takes time. He's preparing different things in us. Um, influence and work with us. Influence, remember I said, means when you look it up in the dictionary, means ethereal fluid, which means heavenly fluid. So that's like an oil coming over us. And then we're able to give that out, uh, like rivers of living water, other uh, phrases like that we're able to do. So, um, but then he wants to impart in us. And the word impart, you know, is when you look at that, it's he's taking parts of who he am, he, he am, who he is, and putting it into us. Well, really, the kingdom of God is already in us, so the impartation might come from the outside and then hit in. Um, but a lot of it is the anointing is there to light up what's already in you. So there's an impartation of the anointing, the power of God that goes, I actually put that into you already. It's in the kingdom. So let me go ahead and with my anointing power, it's going to be hot, right? And that oil is going to drain on you. And suddenly you're going to come alive in an area and you're going to have a great awakening. So impartation doesn't always mean like you didn't have anything at all before and suddenly now you have it. Somebody imparted that into you. Now, sometimes you're in a service like I prayed over people for evangelism because I work a lot in evangelism. So I walk in that anointing. So um, so I'm going to impart that anointing on other people. Well, I'm walking in the power of God. I'm not walking in a thing evangelism is in all of us so you get around an evangelist or someone who has that main anointing it's going to put a thing on you where it'll start uh, evangelizing your heart but what it's doing is the anointing power the power is actually touching the kingdom inside of you so he comes up on us but he also dwells in us and well those two things outside and inside connect you get lit Suddenly you're thinking evangelistically, you know? So that's why if you don't have evangelists, I'm not talking about the kind of evangelists always that just come in and share their testimony and ask if anyone needs to get saved, and they move on. I'm talking about the Ephesians evangelists. I'm talking about somebody who will actually annoy you about it because they're constantly bringing up, we need to get the lost in this church. We need to go get the lost, those kinds of things. Um, it's an anointing that gets lit up. So he's preparing us, he's influencing us, working with us and imparting into us that our life would align with his kingdom. So when we're praying, hovering and brooding of the spirit, that means we're aligning first. Then we call out of what we aligned with him in, we call out to everything else line up with that. Right? If I'm in alignment with God, I can call out to my children and say, get in line. Get in alignment. That's why we get our tires aligned, right? Otherwise, you got that thing going on. Down the road, something's out of alignment, and you know it. There's a vibration, and you're like, okay, we just messed these tires up. There's, there's something about, about that where we get in alignment first. He's working on us first. But we have to know what he's doing so we can submit to it. He's hovering, and he's brooding over us. And he does that with such power. It gives the indication, almost like a movement, hovering and brooding, and um, like a hovercraft. Um, this statement can also be applied to the kingdom of darkness. The hovering and the brooding of an evil spirit is to prepare us, influence, and work with us, and impart into us so that our life aligns with the kingdom of darkness. When you say that's true, I just had not long ago. Um, Someone listed, you know, with mental illness or whatever, just talking with me very briefly, just 
you know, oh, how you doing, da, 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 da. And all of a sudden, they just turned and looked at me, and they said, you need to deny Jehovah. They didn't say Jesus, Jehovah. And I looked over at them, and who was there wasn't there anymore, <laughs> right? It was like, this, this has happened not probably a month and a half ago. No, it would have been about two months ago. Anyways, um, and I said, no, I cannot do that. You know, the picture we always have is when something like that happens as a person goes, no, in the name of Jesus, you know, and then we, oh, get out of me, you know. No, this person submitted to whatever was talking to him, and I'm not going to mess with that unless Holy Spirit says to. I said, no, I cannot do that. You need to do it, and you need to do it now. But this person also sits under the influence of every demonic show you can think of, it's messing with all kinds of stuff. So there's a hovering and there's a brooding that's going on, but it's the, this is the kingdom of darkness. And so when that kingdom hovers and broods over something, how you go into darkness is it subtracts from you. That's what the word curse means, to be subtracted from. When God hovers and broods over something or some area, he actually brings the blessing and adds to it. And the blessing itself is described um, in the Old Testament where it talks about you get so fat that the, the, the problems of this life cannot yoke you. The yoke doesn't fit anymore because you're so fat and full of God. So, um, so there's something about that that uh, we have to see the difference in that why would we try to be under this influence and back under that influence? Um, we need to stick and have hang time with the hovering and the brooding of the Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, and be calling those things down from the heavenly. Genesis 1, 1 through 2 says, is the basic principle of how the spirit realm operates, both sides, before the physical realm moves into action. So there's certain things that are physical here. Before it moves into action, the spirit realm moves into action by hovering and brooding influences over persons, or situations, or items, or I could go on with different things. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Creation is not just a word that brought something here. Um, it's, there's a whole thing inside the word creation that it's a process. Like for God, it's just light be, there it was. But think about it, that brooded inside of him till it was all put together, and then he spoke it out. When he broods over us, it gives us the picture of what should brood inside of us, and then we speak it out. Then things happen. Amen? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. That's how sometimes our family is, or our, our certain areas of our heart are, or certain areas of the region are. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Uh, I'm going to, yeah, I can, I can say this online. I mean, there's worse things out there, but um, this is why uh, they've, science has studied how the woman's body gets ready, um, you know, when creation's about to happen, when a man and woman are having sex, right? So it's the picture of the man hovering over the woman, that the DNA cells, each cell in the body, then all of a sudden responds one to another. Literally, it's not just all what happens in the other region. It's your whole body responds to line up with a line of people, right? The Peltzes, the phrase, the last name, you know. It's you're lining up with the DNA of that person in that moment for creation to take place. Science has proven that. They'll, they'll watch it and they'll see the energy in the cells change and an adaptation from one person to the, well, when you get married, the two become one. What does that mean? Well, we're just together. No, no, we got to learn how to get along. No, there's more to it. There's actually a physical thing that happens because of spiritual things that have taken place. So this is where sex is very, very spiritual. very spiritual so why wouldn't the devil distort it it's one of the biggest things distorted here on the earth because it's part of that hovering and brooding and that creative power to carry Christ in us the hope of glory from one generation to the next 
And the Spirit of God uh, would have hovered and brooded over Mary, and she conceived. Um, I'm excited to meet her one day. She's just a young girl. But there must have been something there that just said, she's going to be able to receive this in her body. Because you're talking about the son of the living God, the ability to house the son of the living God in that body. Yeah? Woo! That's got to be something. So hovering and brooding goes far deeper. And when you look at that, um, creating a nation. Someone had to hover and brood over this nation. And it was God, and he set up certain people to get this thing. And then he set up the rules around it. The Constitution came forward. There is something that said, this is what's going to be birthed. And the land itself had to come up to a point to join with the people who now stepped on it. Because we're walking around our feet are the, are the gospel of peace, right? Everywhere we step on the ground, the ground has to adapt to what's coming off of us. We're supposed to preach the gospel to every living creature, let alone what happens in the ground. So there, there's something to this, something far deeper that when we get to heaven, we'll be like, oh, <laughs> who knew, right? So if the hovering and the brooding affects, um, affects uh, us creating, being a part of creation, um, there's some big picture in this that shows us there's more power in us than we know. We're not just little peons walking around like, whatever God says, he's sovereign. No, he's like, oh, how long do I got to tarry with you? There's a big picture here. You're my son, my daughter. Hover and brood over some stuff. Create with your mouth some things. But you got to be aligned with his kingdom to do that because then you're going to speak on his behalf like we've talked about. And the fear of the Lord definitely has to be there. That's why it was the first thing he told us to pray about for word of life is that the fear of the Lord would rest. Because, you know, just being blunt about it, anyone can have sex anytime, anywhere. There's no fear of God in that. Whatevs. <laughs> You do you, boo. You know, it's that kind of thing. We're just out there doing whatever, not looking at it the right way. That like, whoa, how we were created and what we were created and, and how many children we're supposed to have and, and what kind of business and things that we're supposed to be involved in that we literally are part of the creative power of God as we hover and brood over it. That's a big responsibility. We best have the fear of the Lord. If there's no fear of the Lord, then there's no acknowledgement that he's God. We start to think kind of like we are. That's why people have sex with anybody and, and whatever. So, so there's, there's more to this in the hovering and the brooding. Um, when he hovered over the waters, what happened after that? Stuff came to life. So... You know, instead of being, I got to pray that God does something or whatever. No, I'm going to get in the space of my sons and daughters, my grandkids or whatever. I just want them to feel like I'm hovering spiritually. I'm hovering. We know when we had a grandma or grandpa who hovered spiritually and they go home to be with Jesus, there's a huge void in the family. Same thing with the church because there's a power of influence that's aligned with the kingdom of God that comes off. Did you have something, love? I just wanted to make a quick application. When we're speaking to something or we're praying about something and we pray once and it doesn't happen, you've heard us say, because well, people will ask, well, how long do you keep praying for it? How long do you keep speaking to it? Until it happens. Well, that period of time, you're hovering and brooding over it. You know, you hit it once and it didn't move. So you just keep working on it keep maneuvering it, keep speaking to it, Lord, give me a new direction, and you just keep working it. No, body, you will be healed. You will listen to me. Pain, you will leave. 
Well, I prayed three times. Well, maybe you need to hover and brood to recreate that. And just hover there with the Holy Spirit and make it happen. That's so true. Even with uh, we're talking about healing this morning, sometimes our hovering brooding is mixed with fear, like an uptight mom, you know, trying to grow a child. That child many times is is born with colic and stuff like that, and they just track it back to the anxiety that person felt. So he wants us to learn how to hover and brood in a way that's absolute peace. Just like, let me, let me go sit on that for a while. <laughs> let my influence, the heat of who I am, start some life. Now, when I teach in recovery, I have like an egg in this little fake chicken that I bring, a little chick. And it's just a simple concept to get people started um, in doing the next thing that's right for, for their life, the next right heart thing. And it's just this concept, if you don't hatch out, you die. Wow, that's just revelation, right? But it is that fact that we have to put ourselves under the heat and stay there. So from that side, from my side of it, I got to be under the shadow of his wing, sitting in the heat going, come on, I need to hatch out in this. But wherever you're like, nah, I don't want to do that. You're out in the cold. You separate yourself from God in that area you spiritually die. Right? So from our side, we got to be tucked in. From the side of assignment, we've also got to know how to hover and brood and imitate him and get all ruffled when somebody comes messing. Nope, I've been sitting on this one for two months. <laughs> you're not going to mess with this. This is a baby that he gave us 25 years ago. No, you're not going to mess with this. So there's a protection that comes out of it, and he expects us to rule and reign like that. And so we've forgotten this or didn't know this as a country because we're even looking at the people who found it as no big deal. No big deal. You know, it's, it's dumb. We're not back then. You know, all this kind of stuff. If you look back at who hovered and brooded. These people gave their lives. They were not playing. And now, see, then we got comfortable, but now we're put in a position, really, some of us, uh, attitude-wise, we're coming up into a position like, this is life or death. If I have to, I will give my life for this. That's the only way we're going to take this country back. We got to hover and brood. Let's stand. And we'll go on with this in the in a few weeks here. And um, here's the other part: if if we were tucked under anything from Harry Potter to I don't know uh, Ouija boards to whatever, and you're tucked underneath that death that subtracts from your life. And then you pray one little prayer and you think that it's just all going to leave. Now that brooded over you. That formed you. That changed you. That Now we got to come up and be transformed. And that can be really painful. But the more you stay aligned with his kingdom, the more we're going to be under that heat. And all of a sudden we become a new creation in those areas, right? So we right now come before the throne of Almighty God, boldly coming before the throne of his grace. His grace is that unmerited favor. We come before your throne, Lord. Woo! Thank you. We're so thankful. We're so thankful. We're so thankful that you hover and brood over us. But we're calling forth a new thing as you're finishing hatching us out in all kinds of areas. We're calling for a new hovering and brooding an extra pressure here an extra heat coming down on the region as we're responsible for that lord um, so we pray that over this region that dots would start connecting that um, there would be divine interventions divine things happening in the government and in the region in the churches and in the region. Hover over the churches. When God hovers over something, um, it, it, it either causes the thing that's not submitted to him to just die off. And the thing that is submitted to him to come to life. So when I pray that over a church, I'm literally aware that we could be shutting down certain churches by praying that prayer. 
I'm not naming what churches ain't my business. But when we call for the church of Jesus Christ to come into alignment, those who are saying, I don't want that. I want my own kingdom. I like the way this runs, all that kind of stuff. There is a pressure. There is a hovering and brooding that's going to sort that out. That's part of the great divide. Our body gets rid of useless cells. Think about that concept. If there are churches that are not submitted, it'd be best if they were gone and new ones were raised up. Come on up, priests and kings. Priests and kings, come on up. And new churches and um, fresh anointings. But those who are submitted and they've been crying out, Lord, send a wave of revival to them. Cause a new thing to happen where the old thing is taken over. And suddenly something new hatches out. Suddenly something new comes to be in the mighty name of Jesus. We agree on that. And we agree on our own lives and on our family. Lord, we know the words that we've spoken and prayers that we've cried out over our children and our grandchildren and the children to come. We line ourselves up with the word, Lord God, in Isaiah 61 that says they will come carrying our children from afar off, those who are lost and we're out there. They'll come carrying them home. Come to the truth. Come to the truth. Come to the fullness of the truth. And our grandchildren and the children to come align with the kingdom of God. Hey, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now I want to just prepare us as the band's coming for the service in this way. We're going to be talking about healing. But think about this. If the woman's body is lining up with the man's body when you're about to create like every cell is all responding the chemicals in the body are going unite 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 that's what the rest of it then does is work right we're in that hovering and brooding and gently taking care of each other it's not something that is abusive it's like this is a for real deal if that affects the body um when you're when you're doing that in a godly form they, they've actually said healing can come from that Healing comes from that, from one body to the next, to each other, right? There's a, like an agreement we're doing this. At the same time, when Holy Spirit hovers over your body, wherever there is sickness, it's on a different frequency than the frequency he operates on. So to hover and brood over you, and you sit in the anointing and worship and things like that, your body has to align to this other frequency, you're being pulled by the magnetism of God over into this tone that comes from the heavenlies that suddenly your body goes, yeah. Hmm? And you get under that tone and you let it hover and brood. That's why many times when we're in that, we'll have like a long praise and worship because it just goes there and people don't want to leave and you're just at the altar and you're like, you can feel the healing power of God on your body. Then you go home and there's fighting and there's negative and everything. Not so much. See, because he wants us to align to the kingdom. And then we keep thinking, I just got to get back to worship. Because it felt so much better in worship. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. That's why the tone that goes forth across this nation, like what Sean is doing, Sean Fouch, he's going across different people like that, is to get the tone to change of a hovering and brooding that the people begin to line up with the original plan of their creation. Like, they're, ah, I had deja vu. I forgot this is who I am. Suddenly I'm in worship. <gasps> I need God. Very, very important. So if you're suffering something in your body, just as a preparation, we might be praying for people this morning. We might not. I don't know how, what Holy Spirit's saying to do just quite yet. But 
just think about he's in the midst of us. I'm going to yield to him in worship this morning. Hover and brood over our bodies right now. It's not about an amazing healing evangelistic person. It's about him hovering and brooding over you personally. Create in me a new heart, O oh God. Create in me a new heart, O oh God. Create in me a new heart, O oh God. We feel your heat, Lord God. We're underneath the shadow of your wing. We line up. Forgive us for anything where we would have separated away. But now in this moment, we enter into a worshipful hovering and brooding where there's an exchange that takes place between us and our God. Creative power is in this room. Adonai is in this room. He makes a way where there seems to be no way, even in your body, even in your way of thinking, even in your mind. He's changing us as he hovers and broods over us during this worship time. Come under him and let him hover and brood over you this morning. 